1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 1. Uh, also, I give honor to my, my congregation that has covered me today in prayer. They've been praying for the service today, and the ministry's been praying that God's will build be done. Amen? Amen. I, I do not, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun, so most messages, all messages actually have been preached and will be preached have been preached in some kind of context, some kind of form, somewhere, some fashion, because there's nothing new under the sun. Thank you. I rarely regurgitate the same message. But this message today, and you're going to turn me off. Don't turn me off. Because this message God gave me at the start of this pandemic, this mess we've been in for the last year and a half. And so God gave me this message for the church body, not just for Gateway, but for the church body. So I've preached this. I don't do this often, but I've preached this currently at two churches already in the last year and a half because I do feel it's a word for this hour. Amen? Amen. Amen. And how many wants to receive a word for this hour? Amen? Amen. 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 The book of 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, reads like this. And for those of you that haven't read your scripture and read your Bible all week, we want to catch you up today. Amen? Amen. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle. And we're gathered together at Shaco, which belongeth to Judah. And pitched between Shaco and Ezekiah and Ephes Adim, and saw, and saw, and the men of Israel were gathered together, and they pitched in the valley of Eli, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on the one side, and the Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them, and there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits a span and had a helmet of brass on his head and was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass, and he had great, a grievous spear, I'm sorry, a greaves of brass upon his legs. And a target of brass upon his shoulder, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him, and he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine? And ye servants of Saul, choose you a man for you, and let him come down to me. And if he be able to fight, and if he be able to fight, and if he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servant. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then ye shall be our servants and serve us. Last verse. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight Together, I want to preach this topic today with your help and help the Lord today. Invaded praise, invaded praise. Put your Bibles down. Won't you lift your hands with me one more time today and ask God to be with us. Lord, I thank you, God, for your anointing. I thank you for the power that's already in the house today. God, I pray right now that you break up the fallow ground. Give me clarity of thought. Precision of speech today as I give your word. I want to thank you right now that your word is anointed. Lord, I pray let that anointed word fall on good soil today. I come against the spirit of distraction that may creep up in the house today. The the spirit of distraction that may want to creep up by those who are live streaming today. I pray right now that you hold our minds and our hearts ransom through the throne room of God. That we may receive this word today. This word that may bring us life. This word that may bring us liberty, God. We've been walking in darkness for too long, God. I pray today that this word has illuminated our pathway as we come today before your presence boldly that lives will be changed lord situations god will lay at your feet in the name of jesus we pray can someone say amen amen Amen. you may be seated you may be seated (laughs) invaded invaded praise now today you have to excuse me because i don't know how to be anyone else but myself my church i don't know if uh, they just tolerate me because they love me too much or what but however they're stuck with me just for the moment so uh, but just b- bear with me today as I just, if I'm just me today. 
Uh, so uh, in this battle, in this battle, they, they find themselves, they find themselves pivoted between uh, uh, two places, two places. Uh, it is amazing, it is amazing uh, what is uh, the world that we live in and the situations and the climate that we live in. I'm thankful that those of you that have come out to worship today, and uh, I'm not a doctor, so I dare not, I dare not delve into uh, the medical field because that's not my profession, but I, I do know one thing uh, that maybe Maybe not here. Maybe I'm preaching the gateway, so bear with us just for a moment. We work out some problems. But uh, during this whole pandemic, uh, I heard a seasoned saints. Now, new people, Brother Rodriguez, I can understand that if they would have an issue with, with praise and worship at home. I've heard them tell me, I just really can't worship at home while we're doing the live streaming. Now, I understand it's uncomfortable. But a child of God, a true child of God, that God has brought you out of darkness. Those that God had saved from drugs and alcohol and now you're living a clean life and uh, you got your mind when you should have smoked it out a long time ago. But God said, I, I've called you for such a time as this. Now, those that, that, that have walked in the world and God has brought your marriages, your relationships back together. And you know that it was by the grace and the mercies of God. And for those of us that have been in this for a little while, there should not be one place that we're uncomfortable worshiping and magnifying God. I am thankful for the the body of Christ but there should not be one store there should not be one car there should not be one insulated incident where I feel uncomfortable to worship and magnify God for I'm just telling you right now our praise has been invaded the devil is good at his job the devil he's good at his job the devil is good at his job that's right the devil is a liar but the problem is the body of Christ we have bought into the lies of the world the lies of the devil and we have cowered down and says I can't worship because I've got these issues and I can't praise because the preacher's not right the air's not right the song's not right I'm sorry it's not about you it's about the king of kings and the lord of lords when I worship him and I tell him how great he is he begins to remind me that because I'm great you can be great Chico, the devil. I know, I know. We live in a world that's that that that. No matter where you go, and you know what, I I know we all have social media, or we we look at it, we have it. We I know it's it, it, we're streaming on it today, and I know it's a common thing. But you know what, the greatest curse to this world has been social media because you know there's too many people that live in fear, and and the world tells you you're divided. So you say we divided because of this. You know what? If your sphere of influences is if you're creating division, then you're divided. Don't let someone else tell you that you this that you're disunified I'm just going to walk there I'm not your pastor but I know your pastor would agree with me on this that the body of Christ when we come into the body of Christ I don't know who I used to be because I came up a new creature in Christ Jesus there's no race, there's no social system, there's no rich and poor when we come into the body of Christ because we've cried Abba Father. And because I cried Abba Father, he, he, he recognized me and I'm no longer my kingsman of who I used to be, but he's brought me from where I was and placed me where I should have been. So when we come in the body of Christ, I know this world may be divided, but the church should never be divided. We should have come into the house of God with one mind. Listen to me. If you need the power of the Holy Ghost to resonate in your life you need a miracle you need to be united with one mind the bible said that the holy ghost fell when they were with one mind with one accord this world wants to tell you you're divided so you say okay you're right i'm divided i'm segregated you know some there ought to be a blood washed child of god that say they may work in the world but in this place in this house we serve one god his name is jesus and we serve one flesh and we're becoming one body and one mind I know it's controversial, but I'm telling you right now, I refuse to be quiet because the word of God is the only thing, truth. Everything else is everyone else's opinion. Your neighbor's opinion won't get you to heaven. Social media won't get you to heaven. The newscast won't get you to heaven. The bases will get you to heaven. Thank you, Brother Rodriguez. And if you've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light, you need to turn that junk off. 
and say, I'm not of this world. I'm just passing through. I'm just, this ain't my home. I'm just passing through. If you put it in perspective, when the world goes against you, you still got a praise in your mouth. When your family comes against you, you still have a spring in your step because you're not living for them. You're living for him and you're not walking for your neighbor. You're walking for the king of kings and the, and the Lord of lords. It's valuable. It's valuable that we see where this, where this battle was fought. This battle, this battle, Shako. Shako is translated in the Hebrew word, pronounced Shako, which, is mean, which means fenced in or bushy, bushy hedge. Means a divided front. The devil is wise, and it's no incident, it's no coincidence that the children uh, of Israel were, they were faced with this division, and it was no accident that, uh, that, that they chose this place, and Goliath, he stood up in, in this divided world, and, and he would say, you know what, he began to spart off all this kind of divisive nature and means, and they, and they, they gathered here in Chicago because the world wants to divide the church, because of the world, the devil knows if he can divide the church, he's already won the battle. The, the devil doesn't want the church to come together and have a red hot fiery prayer meeting, because the devil knows when the church gets together and the church begins to pray there's no devil in hell that can stop a powerful move of God let me tell you this you can come in the house of God or you can be on the phone together all that matters is that we with one mind with one accord the devil wants the church to be divided we can't let the world divide us we can't let the devil divide us we can't let our own mentality divide us we got to come into God and say God I choose to be in you Chico. Chico. See, the devil can't divide you. He was in Chico in Ezekiah. Ezekiah. Ezekiah means to dig up. If the devil can't divide you, he'll dig up something about you. <laughs> Does that sound like the world we live in right now? If they can't divide you, they'll dig up some old trash about you. You, you already walking in God, but all of a sudden, some, some of your good friends, you know, you got friends like that to remind you of who you used to be. All right, maybe, maybe not your friends, but your family will tell you. They remind you of what you used to do. And you try to shake that stuff off because you walk in with God. Now, you don't, you, you're trying, but they, the devil knows if he can get in your mind and remind you of how bad you used to be, he'll sabotage where you're going to go. And see, the devil, he, he postures himself. And it's no coincidence that the Bible is staged here and this battle is staged here. And it's exactly where the church finds themselves today. We find ourselves divided. We find ourselves gossiping on one another. We find ourselves backbiting on one another. We... I'm telling you, I'm sorry, it might, not be for, it might be for Gateway, so I'm going to preach the Gateway for a little bit. But let me tell you, I told our church, I told our church when revival happens, division's going to come. See, we, we, we want to have degrees in sin. We want to ostracize the fornicator, and your know, sin is sin. I'm not, I'm not, we, we want to play God. We wanna, but the Bible says restore the fornicator. But it said those who cause division, it says label and mark them. <laughs> division is the greatest tool of the, of, of the devil. And you don't think you're acceptable, you just have a bad day. Sister so-and-so not shake your hand, not call you, brother so-and-so. <laughs> Give you that look all of a sudden, man, I ain't going back to that church. Pastor, not return your phone call, man. I ain't going back to that church. The devil is good at his job. And when you're having a bad day, all of a sudden, the whole world's against you. How many honest folks do I have in the house? Have you had that happen? And here's the, here's the real issue. When, when the, devil, the devil begins to create division between you and the man of God. I know the man of God's not here, but I'm just telling you, you need to make sure you guard against division against your man of God. If you hear somebody talking about the man of God, you hear somebody causing division against the man of God, you need to stop that business right there because it's not necessarily their life because they're throwing up on you. You're receiving that thought in your man. And in the middle of the night, you begin to think, well, maybe pastor is doing that. Maybe pastor is lying on that. Maybe pastor, and you know what? You've received that in your mind. 
mind. Here's the problem. The problem is not the man of God because when you have a need, when you have cancer in your body and you need healing, when you are addicted to drugs and you need healing and you come before the man of God, don't think the man of God's hand is empty when your head is full. You can't receive the blessings that God has for you if you have lack of faith in your man of God. Because it's not by the man of God's prayer life, it's by your faith in the man of God. And if you've received the word of ill intent, you can't receive the breakthrough that you need. So you wonder why your family's still in a mess? You gotta get some things out of your mind. You wonder why your home is still a wreck? You gotta get some things out of your mind. It's time that the true worshipers come and worship in spirit and in truth. And there's some things that I ain't got time to hear. There's some junk I ain't got time to receive. Why? Because I'm on a, I'm on a heavenly timetable and I'm doing war with the devil. I know you've never had the devil dig up anything on you. I backslid, moved out of the house when I was 16 years old. Ran for my calling. So bad. Played the drums for a rock band called the Fisted Midgets. I'll let your imaginations roam on that one. Played travel ball, had scholarships, University of South Carolina, Anderson College. I had baseball and football. I, I was running hard from my calling. I was called at 13 years old, and I was running hard because I was bitter at the man of God, which is my father. I was upset at the man of God in my life, and it caused a division in my life and caused me some trials and some tribulations. I fell into alcohol, became a drug addict. It's just God just does a miraculous work when, when we submit to his will. But the devil, the devil would like to bring up what you used to be to tell you you're not worthy to do what you what you're doing today let me tell you it doesn't matter if you're preaching or if you're witnessing it doesn't matter if you're a Sunday school teacher or if you're a faithful saint the devil will remind you of what you used to be so he'll limit where you're going let me tell you you can't let the devil tell you about your past because God says I've already covered it you can't let the devil get in your head as soon as those thoughts come the Bible says resist the devil if you resist the devil he's got to flee it all comes down to praise if you settle the praise issue you've settled the conquest issue praise 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 we know the we know the root word of Judah we know Judah means praise but the root word praise in the Hebrew Judah yada or yada la hey yada yada y a uh, y a d a h yada yada la hey Praise means to praise or extend one's hand, yada, to praise. We all understand that word. But the root word of yada, yada, la, hey, yada, y-a-d-a, yada, means to be intimate. <laughs> to be intimate. Adam knew Eve. Abraham knew Sarah. To be intimate. If the root word of praise is, I've got to be intimate with God, that means I need to have some private time with God that God can establish me in those private times so he can, <laughs> he can project me <laughs> when the world's going to hell in a handbasket. He can project me from what he's established in those intimate moments so I can hang on and walk in it and know that God has done a work in me that you can't take out of me. Listen to me. For those of you that are going to make it in the end times, and we are living in the end times, this is not a storybook tale. We are living in the last days. For those that are going to make it are the ones that are going to be true worshipers that worship, and they're going to be those that get in an intimate moment with God. So when I began to tell God, it's impossible to tell God who he is, and he not reestablish who he's made in you. It's hard to tell him he's a deliverer, and he's not telling you you're delivered. It's hard to tell him you're a healer, and he's not telling you you're healed. It's hard to tell him he's a way maker and he not make a way in your life. It's impossible to praise God and tell him how good he is and he begin to tell you you're better yesterday than you were yesterday. It's impossible to get intimate with God and he not get intimate with you. True worship. You say, Brother McLean, that doesn't apply to me. It applied to Jesus. If you don't settle the issue of praise, the problem in the day and age we live in, we live in such a selfie, self-taking generation. 
I don't worship idols. I don't have Baal. I don't have Buddha. I don't have Confucius. I don't have. But you got a million pictures in your phone. You want to know who you worship? Some of you just turned me off. I'm not your pastor. He'll clean it up when he gets back. I just know the world we live in. So the devil, you know why he's attacking you so hard? Because he knows who you praise. Jesus himself, Lucifer, the devil, the old, oh man, he's sly. He came up to Jesus himself. And he says, hey, look, I'm going to give you all this if you just bow down and worship me. Now, I don't have time to read it because of the sake of time, but you can go back and read it in Matthew chapter 4, uh, verses 9 through 10. And Jesus said, here's what he did. He said, I'm going to give you everything. And Jesus said, he solved the issue of praise first. He said, all these things will I give you if you'll fall down and worship me. But then Jesus said unto him, get thee hence behind me, Satan, for it is written, thou shalt worship, <laughs> thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And the next verse, you know what the devil did? He was gone. So you want to know, you want to get the devil off your back? You begin to worship God. You begin to magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You, I know depression is real and I know anxiety is real. We're facing it today like we've never faced it before. But it's hard to pray. It's hard to be depressed when you're magnifying the Lord. It's hard for anxiety to take over your life when you begin to tell God, I know you're in control of it. You're promising the word of God that you'll never leave me, nor you never forsake me. I know I feel like I'm forsaken, but Lord, I thank you for the word of God that's being established. Somebody ought to give God a hand clap of praise for the word of God in your life. Look at your neighbor and tell him, don't let your praise be invaded. The devil left. You want the devil to leave you alone? Too many Christians. If you're new in here and you don't understand, this is a little foreign to you, you think we're a little weird. I was at a ball game last night with a bunch of weird folk. Face painted. No shirts on. And they should have had shirts on. They weren't ashamed, but I was ashamed for them. They weren't embarrassed, but I was embarrassed for them. But they weren't ashamed. They didn't care how stupid they looked. And we sit dignified. When that football player, that baseball player, that sports player, that Hollywood actor, they haven't done one thing for you and I. I'm thankful for doctors, I'm thankful for lawyers, I'm thankful for the physicians, I'm thankful for all of that. But let me tell you, can't nobody do me like Jesus, can't nobody. You may think I'm crazy, but you don't know what God saved me for. You don't know what God delivered me for. Excuse me, you can't hold the hell that I've gone through. So get it, you got to use excuse me while I get a little exasperated about my God, excited about what God God has done for me. The devil wants to shut the church up. That's what we need to yell the louder. Hallelujah! You need to tell the devil, I'm coming for my children. I'm coming for my breakthrough. Tell the devil, I'm on the way. In this passage, in this text, out of nowhere, See the children of Israel cowering behind rocks. It breaks my heart. It appears it breaks my heart. I see great men and women of God that know more Bible, have forgotten more Bible, I should say, than I know. Walked with God longer than I've walked with God. Seen great and mighty miracles that no longer walk this walk any longer because they've allowed themselves to be invaded. They've allowed themselves to, let me tell you, it doesn't matter if you live for God one day or a hundred years, the, the same still is true. You got to still walk holy, live holy, act holy. It's still the same. I know there are some people that get in church, they think I've been living for God a little while so I can kind of let down. That's for the new people. Eh. 
Wrong answer. Buy another vow. It ain't in the word of God. If Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he expects his church to remain the same. So you know how you're going to go out of this thing? You got to go out the same way you came in. If God sets you on fire, you shouldn't be a bump on a log when the preacher, when your pastor gets up and preach, if he gets up and says amen, you guys say amen, pastor, I'm behind you. I believe because if you give the devil one moment, one second, he's going to speak fear in your life and you'll cower down. Let me tell you about the children of Israel. The children of Israel have seen their their battles. They've seen victory after victory. They've seen triumphant uh, situations when there, there should have been no victory in store for them. But God always made a way. So this is not a new front for them. It's a, it's a new adversary. And we are finding a different, uh, a different thing today. But sin is still sin. The, uh, depression is still depression. It may come in a different form, a different fashion. It may come from a different lip. But division is still division. It's still, it doesn't matter how they can decode it. It doesn't matter what politician. It doesn't matter any of that. And what matters is what the word of God says. What the word of God says. That if the devil can cause division, he's won the battle. And let me tell you, if it's just two or three are gathered in, I want everyone to make it. But you know what I'm looking for? More than a crowd, I'm looking for two or three that are hungry at Gateway Christian Fellowship. And I would that Apostolic Lighthouse would say, I don't. I want my, every, my brothers to make it and my sisters to make it. But if they choose the world, I'm going to get in behind them like I've never gotten in before. I I know I'm weak and tired, but the Bible says my strength coming from the Lord. So I know I'm gonna, I know I'm tired today, but God, you gotta help me help the man of God. You gotta help me, God, do your will and watch God step in your life. That was saying at the beginning. That's what I love about God. God always uses those that are least qualified. Uh, I, I just I just seen a lot, and usually the preachers that come up that want more pulpit time than anyone else, but never there to sweep the parking lot. Uh, I have an issue with that because God, He doesn't call pastors and preachers; He calls servants, and servants become. Uh, I just have an issue with those who uh, prepare so much for the limelight, and they never prepare in private and uh, let me tell you this, that God will not trust you with the prophetic unless he can touch, uh, to, until he can trust you with the practical. He won't trust you with big things that you're praying for unless he can trust that you're going to walk in the small things. You're going to run in your stockings. You tried not to come to church today. The battery in the car dies and you choose not to jump it off because you just had a bad day and you kicked the tire and you blame God. But if it was for your dollar, I know I'm pastoring. Forgive me, Brother Scott. Forgive me. I'm, forgive me. But your battery wouldn't start. But if you were going for a paycheck, you would have made sure the, church, the car got started for you to go get your paycheck. But because uh, that we're human, that's in our DNA. We, we want to find reasons not to come to God when that should not be. We ought to find every reason to come to the house of God because the world is trying to get my mind. The devil's trying to rack my mind. The world's trying to take me back to where I was. And all along, the world is winning the battle. That should not be. I would that we would come in this thing with one mind, with one accord, and say, I know the world is loud. I know the devil is loud. But my God will be victorious. I read the back of the book, and we win. I know it feels today that I'm not a winner. But God says he's making me more, more, more than an overcomer. So that means I'm going to come in this mess. I would that you would praise God, not for what was, but you will praise him for what's about to be. Don't praise him for past victories. You need to thank him that, God, my back is hurting today. I thank you you're healing it right now. God, my mind is plexed with depression. I thank you that you've already brought me out. See, the battle is over your mind. But what I love about God, he chooses those who seem the least qualified. When Samuel came to anoint the king in Jesse's house, he said, where? The oil never poured. Eliab and all the other men, they were prepared for greatness. And they went to all the schools and they went to, 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 to how to learn how to walk, march and military strategic schools. And they went because they were a part of a fine family and they, they were educated in how to do these things. But, but not David. David was what we call, he was a little special. He was the one that the brothers made fun of. 
He was the one out in the, in the, in the, in the wilderness. He was just bling, bling. Who was that? Oh, that's David. You got to. He comes a little later to supper than everyone else. He's, he's just a little different. I, I know none of you are different in the house, but I was different when I was growing up. I was stuffed in trash cans because I was a little different at 12 and 13 years old. I was harassed. I was bullied. So I, I know the, how it feels to, to be different. I understand how it feels to get your lunch taken away every day. And, you know, I'm, just, I'm having a poor pitiful me moment right now, so just walk with me. I, I know how it feels to, to be the one never picked. I know I wasn't always a good ball player. I, wasn't all, I, was, I, was, I was used to be the short, fat kid that everyone picked on. So I understand David's life. How he was rejected. And not only by his brothers. It's one thing to be rejected by your brothers because you know how brotherly and sisterly love goes anyway, don't you? You're in one day, you're out the next. You know, you're the best friends one day, just as long as no one else is talking about you. We're together, but if as soon as someone comes against you, I'm fighting for you. But it wasn't only his brothers. His own father said, uh, let me see. Yeah, I, I have one other son. Are you sure? It's not one of these fine specimens of men. He said, no. God says none of these. He said, well, I can't really say much about David. He's just a little different. He just, he's just a little off. I don't know what's really what's going on in his mind, but he likes to play his, his harp, and he just likes to write hymns and, and poems. And, and, and Samuel says, well, well, won't you read me some of his work? And he said, well, he wrote this song. He gave, gave it to me for Father's Day. It's one of, his first, one of his first songs as a young child. And it says, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree uh, in the middle of coronavirus. He shall be like a tree in the middle of a famine. He shall be like a tree in the middle of the hardest time of my life. He shall be like a tree in the middle of division, in the middle of hatred and hate speech and the world going to hell. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth you know what? I'm going to tell you right now, the church is not going to be dead. The church, the Bible says, is going to bring forth fruit in his season and his leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. So let me tell you, David said, I settled it a long time ago. Samuel says, give me this boy. I don't get it. Here's why. Because he knows that his strength is not in him. His strength belongs in the Lord. And if he's doing this as a child, imagine what he's going to do as a man. Imagine what he's going to do when the word gets out that he's been established. you got to establish this thing in your life. It doesn't matter the noise on the outside. It matters what's established on the inside. David. The Bible says in verse 12 of our passage. David had already been anointed king. But David didn't go straight to the palace. It takes a special individual. Anybody can go from herding sheep to the throne room. Oh, yeah, give me, give me that Hugo Boss suit. I've been wearing your mommy. I want to wear Omani. I've been wearing all knockoff brands. It's time for me to ride in style. I'm tired of my Kia. I need give me something like Bentley. Let somebody like not, not give me that class. Cause I'm somebody now. David didn't do that. David said, whenever my time shall come, I'll be tending to the to the practical. I'll let God tend to the prophetic. And when my time is ready, God will call me out. See, the problem is stepping outside of the will of God and the timing of God. And if there's an issue going on in your life, now don't bring everything to your pastor. Pastor, I don't know, should I wear pink shoes or red shoes today? Pastor, should I buy this car? I don't have good credit and they want to charge me 33%. I know that don't happen here, but it happens in San Bernardino. Someone say, God bless me with a car, Pastor. It's like, well, praise the Lord. I'm thinking God gave her the car. You know, got a slam up deal, going to make money. I didn't have any credit and they gave it to me for 23%. I said, God didn't give you that car. You need good credit. It ain't got nothing to do with the blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get on for something else all together because I'll get myself in trouble today. Forgive me. 
I know some of y'all done rubbed me wrong and you done shut me off right now, but let me tell you, the blood of Jesus Christ is not meant for our little fleshly issues like that. You got to have a good job and you got to have good credit. Now, God can give, but sometimes we step outside of the will of God because this same sister who got that, somebody had donated a, a car to the church. Now, it wasn't brand new, but it only had like 90,000 miles, so it would be new to me. Praise the Lord. I drove a lot worse. But because she got outside of the timing of God, I didn't plan on telling this, but since I'm here, I'm gonna, I feel I tell it to somebody. It's all about timing. So instead of getting the car for free where she can save up and do better, I'm not talking about a rattle trap. Interior is in great shape. The gentleman who gave it is a member of a church, been a member for a long time. He takes great care of his cars, had all the service records, had air conditioned. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But here she is, trapped in a $600 payment for a $14,000 car. Now, there's nothing to do with my message, but I just feel to go here. I want to remind somebody that God is not about to put you in a worse situation. How many's gotten yourself in a mess? Good Lord, I have gotten myself in more messes than I can count. But my God, it's all about timing. And we step out of the will of God and we put more stress and more pressure on ourselves. And by the time it's time for us to fight the Goliath, we're so worn out and mad at God that we can't fight the Goliath because we can't see past our own rage and our own anger and our own disappointment. But God has a battle for us to fight. And if we stay in his will and his timing, God will lift us up and God will make us victorious. And the scripture says in verse 12, now David, now David was the son of the Ephratite. The Benjamin, uh, Benjamin du Judah, whose name was Jesse, and had eight sons, and a man went among men for old man in the days of Saul. Now David, now David. Why this is important to you and I today, now David. There is no record or no way to really measure eternity. Eternity, we say it's time. Eternity is not time. Eternity lasts outside time. As a matter of fact, uh, physicists will actually, they don't even use the word time. They use time-space continuum. They don't, they, because there's no way of measuring eternity. There's no way of, of consolidating that. And, uh, and uh, the word now is the only eternal word because, uh, you know, I can, we can measure time by three seconds from uh, now is still now. And, and ten seconds from now is still Ten years from now is still, this is class participation, now, thank you, now, uh, now is, is an eternal word, it's the only word in our, in our vocabulary that, that is an eternal word, and, and, and the book of Samuel, it, it's, it's, it's quite interesting because the book of Samuel is, is, is a book that, that's, a, that's a history book, it's a, it's, it, it tells the history or the historicity of, of the children of Israel, and it gives a background and a backdrop of what was going on, so if it's a history book, it shouldn't be now, it should be past tense, then, thank you for all my grammar scholars in the house, it should be then. So the scripture, because it's a history book, should say, then David. But if, the, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the Samuel would have wrote, then David, it would forevermore be stuck in Sunday school around Kool-Aid and cookies. But the writer felt a check in the spirit where he no longer put then David. He put now David because now is an eternal word because it steps in to our time in 2021 because the Bible says now faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith, now faith. Now I don't know what your issue is, but if it was stuck in David's day, you can say, well, that just worked for David. No, those who have faith in God can face any giant in their life life and God will be a deliverer you can face any situation and God will be a healer you can be, oh let me tell you I'm thankful for a now God that steps into my situation a right now right now God yes right now you said you needed it Friday but God brought it on Tuesday a month from now has that ever happened to anybody you say God I need a blessing by Friday and it didn't come Friday like a month and a half later, the check comes in the mail. You're saying, well, God, you're a little late there. <laughs> you thought it. I know you didn't say it. Let me let you in on a clue. God in, doesn't struggle with low self-esteem. Right. Yeah. The Bible says he knows the desire of a heart. So if you thought it, you might as well go and tell him so you guys can get that out and dress, address it. 
Uh huh. You with me? Well, I can't say it. Well, you already thought it. You already felt it. You might as well get it out on the table. You'll tell your therapist, but you need to tell God so God can say, you know what, it's okay. I'm glad God humors our finite minds because God has humored me quite often when I've not had the faith in him. Because when that check came a month later, little did I know that I was able to make that bill, but there was a bigger, larger bill coming or there was something that was going to happen down the road and that check came in time because I really didn't need it then. It was just uncomfortable, but there was a time where I didn't have groceries and and you know why I can trust in God? Because I had a mom and dad that started churches. Listen with me. You want to know why I have faith and nobody can tell me anything different? Because my mom and dad, they started churches. And our church, that my dad, the church that my dad started in Biloxi, Mississippi, we lived in, inside the storefront. That's where it was our house. We lived in the storefront, my brother and I. And that's where we lived and with our parents. And, 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 and man, dad just worked paycheck for paycheck. And he preached on the corner uh, of the street. We're talking about real school, old school Pentecost. We preached on the corner and we did Bible studies. And, and, and I can remember he preached to uh, my brother and I more times than I can count. And I remember hearing my mom and dad pray. We didn't know we were dirt poor. We didn't know. We thought that was common and normal. You should you be careful what you tell your kids. That's right. You got to be careful what they hear you say. If you're dirt poor, they need to think that everything is all right and God is still high and mighty and God is still on the throne. Because when you praise the problem, though, you give too much credit to the devil. But when you say God is going to make a way where it seemed to be no way. Let me tell you, I never knew. But what I heard, I heard a knock at the door. And I heard somebody say, I brought you some groceries. <laughs> somebody did not even go to the church. It was somebody that was in the business two doors down. That said, I don't know why I felt to bring this. God says he'll use the heathen to... Let me tell you, let the devil, let him run rampage on somebody else, but don't let him run rampage on your mind. You tell him God is still victorious. God is still on the throne. You, God is going to make a way where it seemed to be no way. Don't let the devil speak in your life. Prayer. Goliath. Now David. The vision. Dig up. Man, it sounds like where we are today. But man of God, what is that and how does that apply to me today, right now? Here's how it applies to every one of us. David stood facing this Goliath. It's amazing how this young boy, how he began to make his truck just to drop off some groceries. But little did he know he wasn't just dropping off some groceries. God had <laughs> said, it's time for you to stop raising sheep. I've called you for something greater. And because you tended the sheep and because you protected the sheep, because you protected that that was given to you, some of you have left the blessings of God on the doorstep. How many have ever heard the song, Tight Your Bet, I Want It All Back? Yeah. Come on, anyone heard it? Come on. It goes like this, I want it. I can't sing, but I love to sing. That's a shame, I know. <laughs> I have a lapel mic on. I'll turn it on so the, they can't turn me off in the back. And I just to sing, I want it all back. I used to love that song. He gets with it, man. Everything the devil stole from me, I want it all back. I'm like, yeah, Lord, I want it all back. Then God pricked my heart. How's the devil have what I gave you? Then my son, at six years old, left a skateboard on the front porch. And I, I'm a mean parent. I don't know how you parent, but, you know, we discipline on the backside. We don't do counseling with a teddy bear to tell the teddy bear how bad the teddy bear is. Anyway, that's, that's between you and your pastor. You guys can work that out however you want to work that out. But David said, that rod and thy staff. It comforts me. I know I don't feel comforting right now, but there need to be a lot more comforting going on in the nation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But I told my son, I bought that for you. But if it gets stolen, I'm not buying you another one. You're going to have to work. And you have to buy another one. <gasps> you so mean. No, I need to let my son know the value of a dollar. It didn't come easy. A month and a half later, guess what happens? He left the skateboard out. It got stolen. He come to me. My skateboard is stolen. I don't know about that. I say, like, well, I told you. So he's thinking, we at Walmart, he sees a skateboard. I'm like, no. Have you done your chores? Where are the cans you were saving? You so mean. No, I need him to know. 
But here's what God gave me. While I'm looking that little boy in the eye, when I was looking that little boy in the eye, it felt like I was looking at God and God was looking me in the eye. And he said, here's the problem. You've left the blessings I've given you strode through the yard. Oh. You want to know why the devil's got your victory? Because you let the devil invade your praise. And you left it out there. That was good yesterday. I don't need it today. I got a good breakthrough last month. I can get by a few weeks. Let me tell you. There not be, should not be a day go by that you don't open up your mouth. You're not in a hospital bed. You ought to praise him. You're not hooked up to a ventilator. You ought to praise him. You got a leg to jump with. You ought to jump. You got an arm to wave with. You ought to wave. You don't have a leg or an arm. You got a head. You ought to nod and give God the best praise because it's going to come a day where you're going to leave it out and the devil's going to take him and you're going to need it. And God said you left it out. You shouldn't have left it out in the first place. Let me tell you, there's a war coming, and it's not time for the body of Christ to leave what God's blessed us with in the yard. We need to gather our children up. We need to gather our relationships up because the battle is coming. Gather everyone in the house, even if they don't want to come in the house. Here's what we do at Gateway every three months on, on point. I challenge the men of the house, and I know we have single mothers in the house. I challenge them as well. You get and you anoint every doorpost in your house. We do it every three months. We do it to remind our children that I take my kids around with us. We start on the outside. And I don't care what neighbors see. Why? Because I want them to understand that I've given this house to God. It belongs to the Lord. There's some things going to try to come in here that I can't fight by myself. I'm giving God the glory. I'm giving God the praise because he's got me covered. Let me tell you, you want to make it in the last day? You got to say, God, I need you to cover me. I need you to anoint me. I need you to deliver me. And if you pray that, God will guard your mind and God will give you the victory. This Goliath, I, rever, I, really, I really relate to David. I preach on David too much because I relate to him too much. David, rejected. You know, he was rejected. The world rejected him. Doesn't matter what the world rejects. You've been rejected, but God selected you. God Almighty has selected you. He has called you out of darkness I know everyone around you tells you different I know at the midnight hour you talk to yourself and you remind yourself what you used to be but you need to say get thee behind me Satan get thee behind me mine I know I was rejected but God has selected me I know I'm not worthy but God he's clothed me in righteousness he has prepared me let me tell you right now the greatest hour is right now I'm praying that you don't turn me off today. I'm praying right now. You listen to me right now because Goliath, 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 he is, he is big. He is, he's a bully. He likes to spart off. Ah, venom. Division. Ain't nothing like a bully, huh? He used to stick his finger in my, Carlos Moffat, what his name, stick his finger in the middle of my pizza. I didn't need any more pizza because I was a little round, but however, I wanted it because I liked pizza. And that was the only meal that was good at the school. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He would stick his finger in the middle of that. You're going to eat that. Can I? David, little bony chest, walked out, looked at his big brothers and said, what, what's going on? Can't you hear what this loud mouth bully saying about my God? I've been singing him praises all day long. I dare him to find my God. Something ought to rise up in every saint of God. If you have any backbone in you, something ought to raise up inside of you and say, I refuse to accept this. Don't get on social media and spark your mess. You hit your knees and go to the one that can change it all. I, I, I know we have causes and we have things that we've got to address, but, it's, but, it, but it's, it's, it's a shame that we will defend our own dignity, but we will defend our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. Something's wrong with the Christians thinking these days. But David says, what is going on with this uncircumcised Philistine? David says, how are you going to let this person that has no covenant 
talk about my God like that. And who do you think you are? And can you imagine his brothers? That's my stupid brother. He ain't got a brain. You got to forgive him. David, get in here. He's going to see you. I don't care. You've seen people like that? Their body does not exemplify their mouth. You're thinking, this guy's about to get murdered. Does he not see that guy is 6'5"? The Bible said that there's a debate. The, the Goliath's between 9 and 3 quarters and 12 foot tall. Because it preaches better, we're going to say it's 12 foot tall. But nonetheless, he was still a big guy. He was huge. And as David began to spot out, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that would defile <laughs> the children of God? David said, what does he think he's doing? Little did they know. Saul said, won't you tire my armor? David says, you know what? I don't need your armor. God's prepared me for such a time as this. Well, you haven't been to school. You don't know what's going on. You don't understand. David says, I've been taught in the ways of the Lord. I, I went to the rabbinical school. I knew that, that, I, that hero Israel, the Lord our God, is one Lord. I, 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 was, I was taught. I may not know how to fight like this, but I, I know in my heart and my mind who's got the battle. And I was taught about some things. And, and, and there was a day when, there was a day when, when the, the Philistines, when they, when they took the Ark of the Covenant of God and they put it in front of Dagon. On. And, the, and then they came back in the next day and that big statue had fallen over and his head had fallen over at the presence of God. And I remember, and Goliath, isn't he from Gath? And wasn't Gath dedicated to Dagon, that God? So if that God can't stand the presence of if my God, who does this Goliath think he is? His head's going to roll just like that God rolled, just like that statue rolled. David says, I can't be back down. I can't be shut up. You can't get, it's like fire shut up in my bones. I know what God is going to do by faith believing because now faith. Listen. David stands in front of this mighty man. It's amazing. It's amazing. Everything that Goliath told this little boy he was going to do to him. God, David says, you know what? Not what you're going to do to me. Here's what I'm, I'm going to do you exactly what you said you're going to do to me. Amen. If you go back and study Goliath, 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 Goliath. Goliath, they state that he is from a family of soothsayers. And in research, and I've researched Goliath a lot, I cannot find one kill credited to Goliath himself. Not one kill. How is, this mighty, how is this a mighty man? How did he have so many victories, Brother Price? How did he win so many battles? Through fear and intimidation. 20, 21. Fear and intimidation. Fear and intimidation. Anxiety and depression. We have never fought so hard against anxiety and depression as we are fighting in the church today suicide is on the on the rise i had a dear friend of mine a dear friend of mine dear pastor friend of mine that committed suicide about seven months ago it broke my heart i never thought in a million years but but he got sick with with covid and he got sick and, and he got so was so uh racked with depression that that he took his own life and that that, that that just it just bothers me and it just stirs my spirit how could this happen it can happen because the, it won't take long before we get in the battle we forget that we've lost our praise we we come into church we punch a spiritual time clock and it, it's not about punching a time clock it's about being intimate with God it's not about what my neighbor says it's about what God said about me in the private time and here's how I can defeat the Goliath because I defeated a bear when nobody was watching I defeated my mind when nobody was listening I overcame the lust of my spirit when nobody was around I got on my knees and I said God let me conquer this so I can conquer that let me oh somebody needs to conquer some small things in your life because of the small things it's the foxes that swell the vine. Hallelujah. Goliath. Goliath. He began to spit venom. And David said, oh, I know this spirit. It's a spirit of division. 
And David, in no sense in terms, said, shut up. I'm not going to listen to another word. Don't you know who my God is? Some of you need to unplug your computer. Some of you might even need to turn your phone off. Some of you need to deactivate some things. The news doesn't need to be the first thing you see. You need to see the word of. Once again, I'm not your pastor. He can let you on in later on. But I'm telling you right now that the devil has invaded our praise. The Bible says that Goliath came in the morning and in the evening. I had to turn off my news feed because in the morning time, that's the first thing that blew my phone up. And somehow I turned it off and it keeps turning itself back on. Has anyone read anything good in the news in the last several months? Nope. So I know we're supposed to be aware of what's going on in the world. But the church is a little too aware. And we're back tipping the fear instead of walking by faith and not by sight. Let me tell you, your man, the man of God in your life isn't supposed to give you a history lesson and is not supposed to let you know how much power to save, how many beans to save for the end time. He's not supposed to tell you all that because he's not equipped for that. What he is equipped for, to do what he's always done and to tell you how to get your soul right. Let me tell you, I'm going to let everyone in on a secret. Get your, get your pen, get your smart device. You ready? You ready for this? The world's coming to an end. Whew. I solved that for some of you. You're stressed about it. Now you say, well, man of God, now I'm more stressed now. You shouldn't be. Because he said, where I am, there you shall be also. So instead of living in fear because you're not ready for the here and now, you need to be ready for the there and there. By and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God, you need to shout for joy because God has given you the victory. I don't care what that devil said. I don't care what the situation has said. I don't care what Goliath has said. God says he's given you the victory. And I'm closing. Listen, Goliath, his spear, his spear, his spear was 13 feet tall. The head of his spear, the head of his spear was 33 pounds. The butt of his spear was six pounds. Counterweight. His shield was so big, it took one man, a full grown man, to wield the, spear, to wield the shield out and bring the shield back. A full grown man. His coat was 180 pounds. His coat, his helmet was 63 pounds, his helmet. Everything about Goliath screams, run! But Goliath, there's no way. We know that those that grew that tall, we know that there's no way their joints, we weren't made to be that large. So no doubt his joints were arthritic. There's no way that he could have stand all that weight and all that all the time. There's no way. So Goliath wasn't there that he could win a battle with his sword. He was there for intimidation so he can intimidate the body. See, the devil, he hasn't, he hasn't drawn one sword. He doesn't have to because he's already told you you're defeated. And we crawl in the corner because we think we're defeated. And the devil's already told you that you're not going to overcome. So you're not overcoming. The devil's already told you that your marriage is not coming back together. So you've already checked out. If you already walked out, but let me tell you, God's already told you that you can win and you can overcome and you can be united. Here's how I can give this sermon today, and I'm sorry for being too long. When God blessed me with pastoring Gateway Christian Fellowship, honored to pastor a legacy church, my very first year. Now I'm thinking God and I are about to do phenomenal things I'm thinking God we're about to save this whole city I mean I'm walking on cloud nine man we're about to do great things within three months of me being pastor an old lawsuit that had been pending for four years 6.1 million dollars drops on my table I've been pastor for three months Two weeks after that, a beautiful, intelligent group called the IRS. They didn't call me. They didn't schedule an appointment. A van of seven agents pulled up in the church parking lot. 
I've been pastor for three months. I thought God and I were about to do great things. I thought the city hasn't seen the revival that we were about to do. And now here I am in that time, battle after battle. Roofs falling in, just, it's just a mess. Time slicks by. It went six months without one person being baptized and without one person receiving the Holy Ghost. And for our church, our church is an evangelistic church. It's uncommon. It's uncommon, unnatural for somebody not to get the Holy Ghost or get baptized within a month, much less six months. And here, six months, nobody's baptized. Nobody's gotten the Holy Ghost. I'm being depressed. I'm being down. I've never struggled with depression. And here, in the middle of this battle, in the middle of this war, in the middle of this thing, I'm going, we're going to lose the church. What are we going to do? Here we're going to have to have park service. And I don't know what's going to happen. Or what's going to go on? I've been pastor for three months. Everyone's going to think I'm a failure. All of a sudden, it became about me instead of about God. And I don't know if you've ever had a good pity party. I had one of those good pity parties. One of those thumb-sucking-in-the-corner pity parties where I was mad at God. And I told God I was mad. And here, my wife and I expecting our fourth and final child. And we go in for our review and the doctor says, I'm sorry, Mr. and Mrs. McLean, I need to wait on the counselors to come in. And the doctor said, your baby is spinal bifida and is Down syndrome. They began to show all these charts and the deformity in the spine and the, the head and just the, the eyes placement. And that crushed me. It crushed me. The wife began to lose her hair. It's just a dark hour, a dark, a dark time. And all of a sudden, seven months go by, nobody's gotten the Holy Ghost. All of a sudden, it became more about me and less about God, less about, less about the mission. And all of a sudden, I became depressed and I've never struggled with depression. And all of a sudden, I'm laying down, having a pity party, asking God, what are you trying to do? I kind of felt like Moses in the book of Exodus. The Bible said that Moses asked God, are you trying to kill me? Have you ever felt like God was trying to kill you? And here I am. I'm having a good pity party. I'm thinking, God, you placed me over this church and it's falling apart. You placed me over my home and I can't even keep my home together. My child is, is going to have this issue and problem. What are we going to do? I can't. There's nothing else I can bear. I, I'm about to break. I'm about to crack. And here I am on a Tuesday night Bible study, putting a smile on, teaching the best lesson that I can. I, I'm just trying to just fake it till I make it. But inside, I didn't have any yada for God. And sitting in Stater Brothers by my house getting a gallon of milk. I was upset at my wife already, you know, because I was just mad at everybody. Why didn't she get the milk earlier? Don't, don't you know I've been working all day? I've been teaching tonight. I'm tired. I just want to go home, but my, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to do it. Here I am. I'm in Stater Brothers. And of course, the tension rises because there's one line open and it's and now I'm sweating, I'm upset, I'm mad, and I'm a patient person, but my patience has gone out the window because I've lost my yada, and I'm standing there, and all of a sudden, I am at least nine or ten back from the cash register, and the cashier says, that man back there is a pastor, he can help you, and I'm doing like the normal Christians do today, because I was mad at God, I was on my phone, and praying there's another pastor in the building, I've already confessed this to my church and they didn't vote me out so I'm good so I was in there so I was please 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 and she said yeah that man right there and she described what I was wearing and so by that time I feel all the eyes on me she stopped ringing up there's one line so everyone's getting irritated now I'm holding up the show and I look and this lady is crying she's bawling and I look up and I'm broken, I'm mad at God. And now I'm really irritated at God because all I want to do is go home and go back to my pity party. And she's crying. And then the lady calls for me, pastor, can you come here? And how she knows I'm a pastor because our saints is right by our church and I'm in there all the time and they're always talking. You know how we like the fellowship. And so she said, that man of God can help you right there. 
And so as they part the water, now I have to go. And so I go up front. And this lady's bawling. She's crying. And she said, Pastor, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. I've been sober and clean for three years. But I had a relapse and I've lost my children and I can't get off and I'm sleeping in my car. I've lost all hope. I've lost all sense. I just want to give up. I just want to die. She said, I have a gun in my car. And I don't know why I felt compelled to tell the cashier. But I was going to end it tonight because I'm so broken. And all of a sudden, my problems didn't seem so large anymore because I have a hope and I, was, I wasn't resting in my hope. I had deliverance and I wasn't utilizing my deliverance. And here this woman was so broken, didn't know hope, didn't know deliverance. And here I am with the answer. And God says, are you going to stand up to it? And in that, in that state of brothers, and if you know something about me, there's one thing I don't care. I don't care what you think about me. If you're bold enough to ask me to pray for you, I don't do the church thing. I'll pray for you. Tomorrow. Now, if you ask me right then, we're going to pray right then. That lady was hungry. Her, she was crying. She lifted her hands right there in that line. Everybody's watching me. The, the produce guy, they stop what they're doing and they're watching. And then she lifted her hands. I said, in the name of Jesus. And as soon as I placed my hand on her head, she began to cry and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. She got the Holy Ghost in the state of brother's line. And I began to say, thank you. I thank you, God, that even though I'm a mess, you're still putting things back together again. And let me not leave you hanging. I didn't get a call that morning to tell me the lawsuits were dropped. She was blessed. She was blessed. She, was, she had a breakthrough. Hallelujah. All right, that whole week, still, the baby was sick. The baby still had spinal bifida. The baby still, the doctors were still doing scans. We went every week. And still, problems were still at my doorstep. But Saturday night, a lady called me and said, hey, I want to bring a family a family to church tomorrow that they've been plagued with demonic spirits all their life and their moms they're they're ancient witches and they want to break the spirit and this curse but i want to bring them to church can i yes bring them are you sure yes that's the only place they can be delivered only place yes bring them and so as i'm standing i was preaching that sunday morning brother and as i was preaching i was wasn't even halfway through my message and the ladies lifted her hands and began to to pray and i began to walk through the aisle and as i began to walk i put my hand on her head she got the holy ghost her husband stood up no one touching him he got the holy ghost in that service on that sunday morning and uh, and that su that sunday that sunday that sunday we baptized at nine. we baptized nine in the holy ghost nine nine that sunday monday night prayer it doesn't end Monday night prayer. We have Monday night prayer. Monday night prayer. I'm sitting on the platform. I'm pacing. I'm praying. I'm praying. God will respond if you move. So I'm moving. And out my eye, I see 14 people pile in. Along with a nine that just got baptized the day before. By the end of that prayer, I baptized 13 of the 14. By the end of that prayer, let me tell you, God, if you will step outside of your depression and outside of your fear and you'll trust him for who he is, he will make a way where it seemed to be no way because it's not about you and it's not about your feelings. It's about the God you serve and God, he is high and he is lifted up. Not your problem. I had to tell the devil. Depression, you got to go fear you gotta go within a month's time one month IRS sent me a letter we've forgiven all the debt we have made an issue and we've made a uh, error in our filing system which you know they don't often do <laughs> lawsuit we were going to be on the streets the lady released us and say, I hold no charge against you. And I'm not suing the church. Now, the week before my daughter, the week before my daughter was born, 
we have had, at that time, we have had seven scans. Every scan said the same thing. They have sent counselors to us. They've told us how to set our house up. They've come to set us, tell us how to set our draw, drawers up in the house, the, how to set up the bedding, all the things need to go on with a special needs child. And my wife and I were so broken that God has done this for everyone else. Why has he not done this for us? What's going on in our life? And my praise was still invaded because I wasn't walking in true liberty. My wife was bound up because, you know, it's a want motherly love. And that's my child. I can't believe this. And I, I just couldn't. I just kept believing, God, you're going to do something. But the doctors kept saying, nothing's, everything's still the same. And I said, God, you're doing such a great work why is nothing changing and God I just I just still trust you that no matter what happens we're gonna walk with our heads up and believe in you and as soon as I gave it to him the Thursday the Thursday before the the baby was born the Thursday before we went in and the doctor took three and a half hours he did another scan what's going on the doctor came in said mr. mr. McLean I don't want to alarm you but and I'm thinking oh great you know, our human nature, we think the worst, right? Thinking, oh great, what now? He said, here are the previous seven scans. Today we've taken two. There's an anomaly in the scans. All of these match, but there's something, there's a miscalibration is what he, the term he used. There's a miscalibration in the system and we don't want to give you false hope. But that baby is healthy. And we would like to run more tests on your wife. I said, you're not running another test. You're not touching another time. We're not doing another scan. I know you said it's miscalibration, but it's not a miscalibration. It's God in heaven stepping out of his throne in grace and stepping down in healing and touching because I refuse to listen to the voice of the devil. I refuse to listen to the voice of the world. I refuse to live in depression and in the fear. The world wants to leave you trapped. The devil wants to leave you hell bound. But God has given you victory. Put the picture of my baby girl up for me. This is my baby girl right here. You can't tell me that your God can't do it. Well, pastor, you don't understand. I'm going through too much. I, you don't understand my situation. You're right. I don't, but God does. And let me tell you what. My God is a right size fit all kind of God. It doesn't matter your problem small. If you stubbed your toe or you got cancer in your body, my God can heal cancer. My grandmother was sick in the bed. Six inches of her backbone gone. The doctor said she would never walk again. She would be a vegetable. It eaten her bones up. Two and a half months later, in a 10 mile walkathon, she walked three months, three miles in a 10 mile walkathon because God said, I know the devil says this is so, but I've got a miracle. And let me tell you, the doctor and the physician that worked on her, he goes around the world right now. He talks about the he talks about science versus God. He has a testimony because he saw firsthand the account of God. And let me tell you, don't tell me he can't do it. He is still a God and a way maker. Would you stand all over this house and lift your hands toward heaven right now? Come on, I'm going to give an altar call in just a minute. Before I do, I want our minds and hearts to be ready. We have played patty cake with the world and patty cake with the devil for too long. We have been one foot in and one foot out for too long. But God is calling a people that know how to pray to get in this thing like they've never gotten in before. To support their pastor and the work of God like never before. Because this city needs you. This city needs a voice. This city, there's another drug addict that needs another person that's about to commit suicide. That needs to know that depression can be overcome. And oppression can be defeated. And drugs and alcohol can be defeated in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your hands all over this house. Lord, I love you, Jesus. Lord, I pray right now, God. God, I come against the spirit of fear, doubt, and worry right now. God, I know there's giants that we are facing. I know there are situations that have us backed into a corner. But I pray right now, God, that you give us the power and the authority, Lord, that's in the name of Jesus to overcome. I come against, Lord, those spirits that have us bound. I pray, God, that you, that you anoint, that you break every yoke of bondage, every yoke of depression that's overshadowing our minds. And, Lord, lay them at your feet so I can leave victorious right now. Lord, I pray that you break up the fallow ground. Every head bowed and every eye closed right now. But the price, would you come see me? Every head bowed and every eye closed. 
We talked about faith. We talked about faith. I'm going to end this altar probably a little different than what you're used to, but I feel it's what I feel in the Holy Ghost. Brother Farragos, would you come up? Brother Rodriguez, would you help Brother Price out? Here's what we're going to do. Now, if you don't have, if God's blessed your life and you're living a victorious life and man, you walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, praise God, I'm so thankful for you. But I'm coming after for those that the wheels are about to come off and you're about to lose your ever-loving mind. See, God wants confession out of you. You're worried about what your neighbor's going to think about you. Hell is not worth that. I'm just telling you right now. God has wanted his church to walk in liberty and God has wanted his church to walk in freedom, not in the opinions of others. It doesn't matter if this is your first service or if you've been here since the beginning. Every one of us, God says every one of us are sinners. We are born in sin and shaped into iniquity. I, I'm going to ask right now, as I open up at this altar, the men of God that are here right now, I would that they would stand across from each other. Brother Pierce, would you stand across, Brother Pierce? We're going to do a prayer line. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to, if you, if you have an issue that you can't do by yourself, these men of God are going to cover you and we're going to pray for you right now. And we're going to ask God to lead you and guide you. But we can't do it for you. you got to look up to the devil and that giant's been st facing you and tell him I'm coming after you. you got to let out a war cry of a warrior that you've been back down for too long. Devil, you've had my mind for too long. It belongs to Jesus. Now, here's what I'm going to challenge you to do right now. I'm going to challenge you to step out by faith and come around to this altar on this other side. And I want you to pass through these men. Come on now. If you're, about to, if, you, if you're going through a trial, if you're going through a heartache, if you're going on something you can't do by yourself. Come on, come on, quickly, quickly. Come on, quickly. I'm telling you right now, spirit of liberty is right now in the house. Come on, as you come through, I want you to get that one thing in your mind right now. Every child of God, if you have your prayer warrior, I want you to come on this side right now. I want everyone to gather around the altar right now. Come on, quickly. For those of you who don't need prayer, we're going to do this thing together because we're in this thing together. Come on, as you come through this line, I want you to expect a breakthrough. Expect your miracle right now. Come on, ask God to do it. That's it. Don't stop. The same God who Come on, don't stop. This is your battle. The battle belongs to you right now. You fought it by yourself for too long, but God's giving you the victory right now. You faced it for too long, but God is going to let you walk over it right now. Come on, you've carried the burden for too long, but God's going to shed you that burden right now. Come on, as you come through, lift your hands high. Because your God is high and lifted up, his train fills the temple. Come on, find somebody to pray with. Come on, brothers, find a brother to pray with. Don't let the devil invade your praise. He's been too good to you. God, I thank you have a mind of me. I thank you you're not leaving me. Come on, I need a prayer warrior in here to lift up your voice toward heaven. Pray for your brother. Pray for your son and your daughter. That next generation. Come on, the gates of hell shall not prevail. The gates of hell shall not prevail. I thank you, you never left me alone. Hallelujah. God who's never late is working all things out. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody wait on the Lord. 
God, I thank you. You're reestablishing me right now. I thank you that you're healing my body even though I pray right now. Lord, even though my son and daughter are in the crack house, I thank you you're delivering them right now. I thank you that my husband, my daughter, my, my son, my wife are wavering. I thank you you're calling them back right now, God. <laughs> Come on, somebody speak those things that are not as though they were. Speak your blessing. Speak your deliverance right now.
same God who never fails will not fail me now. He won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working on. God can feel you right now. I keep singing, sis. If you have not been baptized in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I challenge you today. Decide, make the decision. Don't let this day go by where you go out out those doors without being committed to God in a way that you have not been committed before. We can baptize you today in the name of Jesus Christ for the washing away of your sins. This is no coincidence. What you feel in this house here today is no coincidence today. God is here. Keep singing, sis. There's a spirit of worship in the house. In the lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will.
in my lowest valley, yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. of praise in the house here today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory. I'm not going to let nothing invade my praise here today. Hallelujah. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Amen. I want to thank Pastor McLean for blessing us with that word today. Amen. Some of you uh, probably came here with some situations that God spoke to you about today. That's a mighty coincidence, isn't it? I'm being facetious. That's a deliberate God who knew you were going to be here before you even knew you were going to be here. Why do I say that? Because from the day you were born and the day he was born, God was putting together this day to make sure that both of y'all came together so you can hear that he's able, hallelujah, and he's ready to talk to you if you're willing to listen. That's how deliberate God is. This day. For me, I could say it's 42 years in the making. For you, however old you are, you can say that's how long God's been working on putting this day together. That's the God that we serve. Amen. That's the God that you serve here today. Amen. I want to thank everybody for coming. Amen. Thank you once again, Pastor McLean. Amen for that right on word. Invaded praise. Invaded praise. I want to thank all the visitors. Amen for coming. Amen. I, I, I know you heard from God here today. Amen. Sis. Amen. Sits in your family. Amen. Amen. Sir Lehman. Amen. Amen. It's good to have you all in the house of God, Sister Christina. I don't know about you all, amen, but I feel blessed to have been here today. God, God spoke to me. Amen. And he told me to stop being so self-centered and fearful. He told me that my fear was allowing me to be self-centered. Because I was worrying about myself and I was forgetting about him who's able to do all things exceedingly abundantly above all that I could ever ask or think. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. That's my testimony. Amen. I want to encourage everyone. Amen. Once again, thank you for coming out. Amen. We want to see you again one more time. And if you have not been filled with the Holy Ghost, you need the Holy Ghost. It is the power of God in your life. Jesus says in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, so you need the Holy Ghost. If you have not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, Acts 2.38 says you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And, and it promises you that if you're obedient to that, then the rest of it says, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And if you have not repented, amen, because you're still holding your ground that I'm right and they're wrong, let it go and get God. Repent, amen, and God will change your life, amen. Once again, we want to thank each and every one of you all for coming out, amen. Stay in prayer, stay connected, and don't let the world invade your praise, amen. You're dismissed today in Jesus' name. Uh, we have Bible study tonight, amen. Thank you, Brother Fergo. Remember, 6 o'clock tonight is going to be Bible study, and we're continuing on the videos on the end times, amen, in Jesus' name, amen.